in this program that we've talked about, Greg Braden, mm -hmm. has shared that there are many potential applications for the new physics and biology, including in energy, space travel, mm -hmm. medical, computers, healing of trauma, and, and so much more. Can, can you help us uh, vision some of this or uh, understand what examples of this might be? Oh, yeah. I mean, the implications of understanding uh, the fundamental physics of this fundamental field um, have, uh, you know, very large implications in many fields, like from even temporal violation, as we were talking about, like meaning being able to predict things in times or and so on, which are not precluded precluded from Einstein field equation neither, so people understand. But as well, you know, energy production and gravity control and health and implications are remarkable, tremendous. Uh, we're talking about uh, almost infinite amount of energy available in every point. Uh, or we're talking about uh, being able to control gravitational fields just as we've built a whole civilization um, in the industrial era based on controlling electromagnetic field, which we succeeded in doing very well and, you know, produced the civilization we have today where we're transferring data over electromagnetic waves and we're using electricity and all this stuff. Well, now the next step for humanity is to control the gravitational field. This could not be possible because we didn't have a fundamental analytical solution to the gravitational constant, meaning we didn't understand gravity at its most fundamental level. Einstein told us that it was the curvature of space-time, but he didn't tell us what space-time was made of. And so now we're discovering that actually space-time is a fluctuation of the of the quantum field, like a plasma. It's like it's a structure, and that that structure, yes, when it curves, it produces gravity, which is what Einstein found. But that is a real structure, it does produce real effect, we call it gravity, so it's not just a conceptual thing. Now we are actually understanding the mechanics of this, and it's giving the right solution for the mass and for the electromagnetic field and for charge and all this. So all of a sudden we understand where these things come from, forces, and now we can even imagine that using this technology we could extract matter directly from space, that is, the replicator, you know, uh, it, it becomes possible. We're talking about uh, opening the mouth of wormholes. We're talking about warp drive. We're talking about, you know, very, very advanced technology can emerge from this. And I assure you that this is not, um, you know, so fringe, meaning like there is a section at NASA, uh, Sonny White works in it, Dr. Sonny White works in it, and, you know, they've been trying to make a warp uh, drive for multiple decades uh, using vacuum, uh, quantum vacuum fluctuations. So this is not so far out, it's just that um, now I've been able to solve the equations in the standard model of physics um, with no free parameters, all from first principle, describing you know these scales and these constants and, and and that gives us the roadmap for the development of those technologies so you're bringing in constants so so these uh, cosmic constants is is something that is one of the things central to your work can you uh, just share a little bit about that. Well, they're central to physics, meaning as we did physics over the ages, we've discovered that there is fundamental constants uh, that the universe continuously use um, and um, that um, they represent certain things like electromagnetic forces, gravitational forces, you know, quantum forces and so on, the Rydberg constant, the G factor, the gravitational constant, you know, many different constants. And um, they are not necessarily well related in the standard model because they were discovered at different times and they were discovered with different formalism. And so they were never kind of like necessarily all connected, right? So like cosmological fundamental constants stayed cosmological and quantum constants stayed quantum and they didn't really talk to each other well and so on. And so 
uh, and the same with the forces. And so what this does is that it unifies them all. And all of a sudden, from the same principle, from this, the same first principle, you can now put all of the constants in physics, all of the scales, and all of the forces. And in some cases, multiple of these constants are measured with 13 degrees, uh, 13 digit accuracy, right? So, you know, 13 significant values after the period. And these, this theory nails them all, you know, which is remarkable. If, if a theory in physics nails one of them, it's considered, you know, an amazing achievement. And it's, it's you know, it's a theory that's taken very seriously from that moment on. In this case, it nails them all with very, very high level of accuracy, and it scales across the scale. So, you know, all of a sudden, uh, you get a, a full picture of, and as I was saying earlier with Greg, is it, it's it's um, it's like a roadmap. It's like the user's guide to the universe. <laughs> and um, when you have the user's guide, it's much easier to navigate. You know, uh, you know, um, this is the this is the case. You know, I don't know if you're like me, but <laughs> when I receive stuff, typically I try to put it together, and then eventually I revert back to the instruction. This is the case that like we we tried to put it together, and now finally we get the instructions and. It gets much easier. Well, now, didn't didn't Einstein go to his grave searching for this cosmic constant thing? Um, searching for unification. Yeah, yeah actually, right. he was writing physics the day he died, trying to solve this. <laughs> right. Yeah, so it, yeah, absolutely. And and um, I, I I firmly believe that if Einstein had the tools we have today, he would have solved it a uh, long time ago. Um, you know, but he didn't have the benefits of all the experiments that have been done since then and all the observation that was done in, uh, in cosmology and all this. For instance, his theory of general relativity predicted singularity, predicted black holes. In fact, the solution to Einstein field equation is a black hole. That's the first thing that was, done, that was found uh, by Carl Schwarzschild that solved Einstein equation for Einstein because I... Einstein didn't solve them. He, he just put the concept out, um, and and um, and but the, but Einstein had not the benefit of um, of observation of black holes. So he thought that those were probably not necessarily real, and many others, you know, had some reservation about a point of infinite density because the scaling comp concept was not there. Fractals were not there. You know, there was a bunch of things missing. If Einstein would have had those confirmation, I think Einstein would have put the, the pieces together because people don't realize. But Einstein published papers at the time with Rosen, for instance, describing subatomic particles as mini singularities mm -hmm. and that were connected through wormholes. People don't realize that this is, this is so when, when I'm talking about singularity at the atomic level, people think it's a very far out idea that's very far from mainstream. But this, this is the father of some of the mainstream physics, uh, most prevalent mainstream physics on the planet that talked about singularities at the Planck scale and, or at the, at the atomic level and, uh, and wormholes connecting them uh, the Einstein-Rosen bridges, which eventually became, you know, very uh, well uh, documented in terms of um, of physics, um, and so, uh, and certainly black holes did as well. So, um, you know, it's kind of like all the pieces were there. I just put them together in the right order, just because they were discovered in kind of like historical order, which was not necessarily obvious to reconnect everything. Yeah, well, I, I would say a lot of humility there <laughs> and saying, well, if Einstein had had the, new, had the tools I had, whatever. I mean, astounding, you know, truly jaw-dropping. Uh, yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to now segue to something. It that, could have been other physicists other yeah. than Einstein as well. You know, there was plenty, you know, Paul Dirac, many others, uh, Max Planck, others, you know, Bohr and so on. They were uh, remarkable people. And they did what they could with what they had at the time. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Still, Which was wow. already remarkable. So this cosmic constants thing is something to celebrate. Like mm-hmm. these remarkable scientists that we're talking about, and they didn't didn't quite get there, couldn't get into that end zone. And mm-hmm. that's what, right. your, what your research is bringing. You know, us. what's really remarkable, and as uh, Greg talks about it, is that all that knowledge was known by the ancient civilization. That is, the philosophy of it was there. You know, the concept that there's a field, you know, they called it mana, prana, chi, all kinds of things. They talk about its geometry. They talked how it was generating singularity, like, and that, like, everything was inside everything. I mean, you know, the the water drop in the ocean thing. And, and, and so all the concepts were there. <laughs> We discovered the physics uh, in patches, right? And now, you know, the, the concepts, the, the philosophy, the understanding and the physics are coming together and they go, oh, okay. No, it's not just a concept, it's really the way things work. And actually, when you write the math that way, it actually works, right? It comes out and it's beautiful. And unlike some of the standard model, you know, um, equations, it doesn't require free parameters, you know, which in quantum theory, there's 21, which doesn't make it wrong. It just means that, you know, there was patchwork that had to be done because some of the pieces were missing. Now the pieces come in and it just, it's like a lotus that opens and it's go, oh, okay. That pedal relates to this pedal, relates to this pedal, because they're all connected to the same thing.